Good morning. Ohayou gozaimasu. Welcome to our annual Bodhi Day service for 2021. Nice to have all of you here and there joining us for this service. It's always a special service as we uh, acknowledge the day that the historical Buddha, Shakyamuni, had his awakening, his enlightenment experience. So not too long ago, we had a group visiting the Alameda Temple, and outside we have a statue of Shindan Shonin, and, and behind, or in front of Shindan, is the Bodhi Tree. So visitors were there looking at the Shindan statue, when that, as that was pointed out to them, and again, pointed out that behind them, if you, they turned around, they would see the Bodhi Tree. And they were so impressed. Really? Is that the, that's the Bodhi tree? And so they were really impressed that there would be a Bodhi tree here and, and maybe more connecting for, for non-Buddhists, non-members to recognize the Bodhi tree more than they would recognize the statue of Shindan Shonin. So it was special for them to come to the temple and to to be able to see an actual Bodhi tree. And this is part of the story of uh, Siddhartha Shakyamuni sitting at the base of a Bodhi tree when he had become enlightened. So today I would like to introduce you to our chairpersons for this service. Yes, serving as our chairpersons for today's Bodhi Day service are Otter and Penguin. So you may have seen them there here before, but they're from Alaska. And so being up there, they don't come down this to this area, our area, very often. And they've been able to participate in our services by watching the Facebook Facebook link that is provided. And so they've been participating in our regular Sunday services and so they are so happy that, that even remotely that they are able to participate in our services and, and uh, they have had some interest in Buddhism and even though they're not in the area they feel like they are regular members and and regular participants enjoying the service and getting to know the chantings that we do and enjoying the Dharma messages. So uh, even from far away, because we're able to provide these uh, video services, they have even more been able to uh, pique their interest and their study of our Jodo Shinshu tradition. So they're so happy. And, and to come here today was a very special occasion because they didn't fly down here. They swam all the way from Alaska to California just to come to actually be at a service. And they uh, volunteered to uh, serve as our chairpersons for today and all the more because it's a special service, Bodhi Day service, they get to learn even more about our Buddhist traditions. So they are very happy to be here, wearing their masks, reminding us to continue to be safe and cautious. And you see that they both have their Onenju on, so they are ready for service. I'd like to go over our service order for today. We will begin with the reading of the Hyobyakumon. This will be followed by the three treasures and the reading of the Rai Sanmon, the three treasures in Japanese. And I'll take my seat upon the altar and we will chant the Sanbujo and the Sanbutsuge. Nembutsu and Ekoku will complete the chanting portion of our service and then I'll come back here for our Dharma message for today. So hopefully you can uh, prepare for this portion of the service and, and get your paperwork or your service books with the three treasures and uh, the Rai San Mon and then the two chants Sambujo Sambutsuke. 
Okay, so with this we will begin. Please join me in Gus Show for the Hyo Byakumon. We are gathered here this morning to commemorate the Day of Enlightenment of Siddhartha Gautama, which took place on the morning of December 8th, over 2,500 years ago in India. Along with the rising of the morning star, he became the Buddha, the fully awakened one. As we observe this very auspicious occasion, may we learn from the content of his enlightenment and begin to live each day fully, humbly, and gratefully. Namo Amida Watsu. Namo Amida Watsu. Namo Amida Watsu. Namanda, Namanda, Namanda. The three treasures. Hard is it to be born into human life. Now we are living it. Difficult is it to hear the teachings of the Blessed One. Now we hear it. If we do not realize the truth in this life, when will it be realized? Let us reverently take refuge in the three treasures of the truth. I take refuge in the Buddha. May we absorb ourselves in the principle of the way to enlightenment and awaken in ourselves the supreme will. I take refuge in the Dharma. May we be submerged in the depths of the doctrine and gain wisdom as deep as the ocean. I take refuge in the Sangha. May we live in harmony in the great assembly as disciples of Buddha and be freed from all hindrances, becoming units of true accord in the life of harmony in a spirit of universal oneness, freed from the bondage of selfishness. Even through myriad ages of kalpas, hard is it to hear such an excellent, profound, and wonderful doctrine. Now we are able to hear and receive it. Let us thoroughly understand the true meaning of Tathagata's teachings. Rai San Mon. Ninjin ukegatashi imasure ni uku, buppo kikigatashi imasure ni kiku, kono mi konjo ni mukatte dosu zumba, sada ni izure no sho ni mukatte kakono mi o dosen. Daishu moro tomo ni shishin ni sanbo ni kieshi tatematsuru beshi. Mizukara butsu ni kieshi tatematsuru. Masani negawaku wa shujo to tomo ni daido wo taige shite mujo i o okosan mizukara ho ni kieshi tatematsuru masani negawaku wa shujo to tomo ni fukaku kyozo ni irite chie umi no kotoku naran mizukara so ni kieshi tatematsuru Masani negawaku ba shujo to tomo ni daishu o tori shite issai muge naran. Mujo jin jin mimyo no ho wa yaku sen man go ni mo ai o koto katashi. Ware ima ken mon shiju ji suru koto o etari. Negawaku ba nyorai no shinji sugi o geshi tate masuran. Namo Amidots, Namo Amidots, Namo Amidots, Namanda, Namanda, Namanda. Sambujo, Sambutsuge.
Good morning again, everyone. Thank you for your attendance at this 40 day service. I'd like to start with the reading of Awasa. Please join me in Gasho. Those who reach the pure land of happiness return to this evil world of the five defilements, where, like the Buddha Shakyamuni, they benefit sentient beings without limit. Namo Amidavutsu. Namo Amidavutsu. Namo Amidavutsu. Namanda, Namanda, Namanda. So every year on Bodhi Day, we recollect the story of Shakyamuni Buddha and his struggle to reach his enlightenment. And part of that story is of the Buddha to be sitting at the base of the Bodhi tree and in meditation. But in his mind, he's in this battle with the evil demon. Uh, Mara. So this battle takes place in his mind, huh? battling within his mind, uh, his physical form. He's sitting quietly at the base of the Bodhi tree, but all this turmoil is going on in his mind, trying to remain focused and meditated. So the demon took many forms as this battle raged. The demon became a fierce warrior prepared to defeat Shakyamuni in combat and it would change to be a beautiful maiden and trying to win Shakyamuni's favor and lure him away from his goal of reaching enlightenment. The demon took whatever form necessary to defeat or distract Shakyamuni's determination to reach enlightenment. So who was Mara? fighting Shakyamuni, holding him off from reaching enlightenment. Who is Mara fighting each of us as we try to learn about enlightenment and how to get there? So the battle that Shakyamuni went through in engaging with Mara and trying to defeat Mara, we have the same battle as we try to recognize to learn what it means to be, be Buddhist, to become enlightened, and what is the practice that we're supposed to engage in. So Mara is our subconscious self, subconscious mind. Mara is our ego. And our ego has always been in a position of power and control. And it doesn't want to relinquish that position of power and control has had it as long as we've been alive. This ego power sense has been there. This is Mara sitting in control of everything. Okay? So the ego, when it is challenged, it fights and battles to hold on to its position. And we are trying to battle it so hopefully we try to to overcome our ego-centeredness, move beyond the control of the ego self so that we can see the world as it is rather than how our ego wants us to see the world. Okay. And so this is why uh, earlier today we read the three treasures and in one portion of the three treasures it says I take refuge in the Sangha. May we live in harmony in the great assembly as Buddhas, as disciples of Buddha, and be freed from all hindrances, becoming units of true accord in the life of harmony, in the spirit of universal oneness, freed from the bondage of selfishness. Freed from the bondage of selfishness. So we are restricted by our ego-centered selves, and we want to become free of that bondage so that we can live a real and natural life. So this is part of the three treasures that we read every week, reminding us of this direction 
that the three treasures uh, points us towards. So once we move beyond the ego, ego self, the mind is settled and a life of gratitude becomes natural, becomes fulfilling. And this is the goal of the Buddhist path. There are so many stories about Mil Konin and how they live their lives. And they are examples of this process of going beyond their ego-centeredness and finally becoming able to appreciate and enjoy their lives completely settled in their mind, no doubts conflicting with them. And so they live these very natural and happy lives. And in one story, the Myokonin Genza, uh, I can tell the story about when he went to visit the Ozaki family. And he does this each year, at a certain time of the year, he goes to visit the Ozaki family and stays there for a couple of days. And so the Myokonin are known to be living a very uh, Buddhistic life, you know, awakened in their awareness of the Nembutsu practice and, and being able to live this natural life of gratitude. So he goes and visits the Ozaki family and after finally getting there, traveling a long way, uh, he's not so kind of dusty from the road and everything. So he sits on the porch and, and washes off, uh, cleans his feet to make sure he's clean when he before he comes into the home. And the first thing he does is he goes to the family altar, the Opatsudan, and rings the kin, ding, ding, hands together in gasho. Very appreciative that he's able to visit the family again, that he has made it on his journey to get there, to meet the Ozaki family again. Then once he has, he's done all these things, he greets each person. They all come in knowing that Genza has come, and so the grandparents, grandma, grandpa, father, wife, all the children, one by one, they come to say hello. And he makes sure he greets them very politely, acknowledging each one of them one by one. And not only greeting them, he brings a small gift for each of them in the family. And not only family, even to the workers and the helpers who are, are there. Uh, at the home as well. And then he brings additional, little bit of treat to give to the dog, the cat, the chickens in the yard, each, each living thing. He gives a little bit, it goes to the uh, Japanese pond in the backyard and the koi are swimming there. So he feeds them a few pieces of their feed. And so acknowledging them, uh, smiling and, and looking how much they have grown in the one year that he, he had been, since he had been there last. And not only the fish, he goes to the big tree and talking, talking to the tree and smiling and laughing and just noticing, look how much bigger the tree has gotten since the last time he was there. So happy to see all these things, not just to get there, not only the family, all the animals, the fish, even acknowledging the life of the tree and all these things he's able to uh, recognize and, and say something to every being there. So he would stay once he got to the home, stay a few days, but every day while he was there, he would take the time see something that needs fixing, maybe the screen door, Shoji's panel, he would fix that and then go outside, waiting in the garden, uh, cleaning up the yard, uh, pulling the plants that don't shouldn't be there and, and raking up other areas to make them a little bit nicer and doing all these things, working the whole day, sweating and, and making sure things are proper. And, and in the mornings, he would wake up early. First thing he would do, would go to the home altar and chant one of the sutras and say his nembutsu. Then he's ready to start the day and saying good morning to everyone. And just being very mindful, very mindful, not to waste 
the opportunity of each day. So this is how we live, just did, just like this. And to meet someone like this, it's impressive. So Mr. Ozaki, the head of the household, you know, he would take the time knowing that Genza is this special person. And so talk to him about the Dharma and, and uh, sharing things about Buddhism and the Dharma, listening to Genza's stories and things like this. And as he paid this time and respect to Genza, he too became awakened just from the presence of Genza being there and visiting his home each year. Another part of Genza said during the meals, he would take his food you know, and receive it, itadakimasu, being so grateful to receive the meal, and he would eat the plate cleanly, eating everything off the plate, and it would be commented that the dish hardly need, needed to be washed because he would eat every single morsel that's on the plate, and just, just being so appreciative to have this food provided for him, and he's just happy. Genzo is just happy to have all these things that were provided uh, in his life and during the time that he's uh, able to visit his good friends, the Ozaki family. So, as Genza lived this type of life, his life was a reflection of this awakened awareness that he had come to. And it's a, re a reflection of the enlightenment, the awakening that uh, Shakyamuni had come to. At first, Shakyamuni was hesitant. He didn't know how to really share these teachings. It's too difficult to explain everything. Um, should he or should he not? And finally, he decided he needed to. If he just kept it to himself, it would be, he would feel good, but it would be very self-centered. And so to share it with others is to be able to bring the truths bring enlightenment to others, to his disciples, to all beings. And this is what Genza is doing as he lives this type of life. So I think this, how we live, is the essence of Bodhi Day. Not only to acknowledge, not only to recognize what Shakyamuni did, but we find encouragement and guidance in how we live our own lives like Genza did, and we should do the same way to greet our friends like he did, to greet our families like he did, to eat our meals gratefully like, like Genza did. So let me read this uh, Wasan one more time. Please join me in Gassho. Those who reach the pure land of happiness return to this evil world of the five defilements, where, like the Buddha Shakyamuni, they benefit sentient beings without limit. Namo Amida Butsu, Namo Amida Butsu, Namo Amida Butsu, Namanda, 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 Namanda. Okay, thank you very much for letting me share these Bodhi Day thoughts with you. I'm going to light the incense and please prepare the same uh, where you are. Um, however you have set up to do to offer incense in your homes, whether you're actually burning incense or uh, providing flower petals or rocks or marbles or whatever you are doing. Um, and we will conclude this service. We would like to thank everyone who has been able to um, join us and those who were helping to prepare for this service to help chair. I'd like to thank uh, Otter and Penguin for joining us as our chairpersons for today and all those who provided the flowers to set up, uh, adorn the Onaijin area, flowers and fruits and, and rice offerings, all these offerings that have been set up, others who have been helping to prepare the video service and shooting and editing and providing the link that is sent out to everyone and then you who are able to join in on this service. So thank you to everyone who is involved.
Please join me one final time. We'll close with Gashio. Namo Amida Wutsu. Namo Amida Wutsu. Namo Amida Wutsu. Namanda, 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 Namanda. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Namanda, Namanda, Namanda.